Can we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Dr. Lantier, roll call. Veronica Bates. Present. Stephen Berry. Present. Suzanne Joyce. Here. Noreen Poitras. Here. Mike Popovic. Present. Suzanne Salisbury. Here. Beth Schultz. Here. Student Garcia Beretti. Present. Student Chan Skagney. Present. All present. Thank you. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Student council reports. Um, congratulations to Niagua and Muhammad for making it to nationals this past weekend. Um, <laughs> seniors ordered their cap and gowns this past Monday, and the end of last month we had some students attend states for the chess tournament. The WHS step team gave an amazing performance at the staff first student game, ending, ending the end of last month with students winning. Last weekend, the Drama Club performed at One Axe at Thorne Academy and did an amazing job with Aiden Lucas, Zoe Popovic, Abby Molesky, and Gabe Hurst receiving all, all cast from judges. Um, today, students from, um, from all United Nations were assigned countries and committees for their conference in May at USM. May 15th, Red Cross will be back at the high school in the gym for the spring blood drive. Any and all don donors would be greatly appreciated. The National Honor Society is looking for more volunteer opportunities out in the community, and if there are any currently open to con currently open to contact the advisor, Will Shabbat. Uh, over at the Vocational Center, both DECA and Skills USA students have competed in their state conferences and competitions. FBLA will be participating in the state conference and competition next week. FBLA members also participated in the Titan Challenge along with the JMG students from Westbrook High School. Both groups benefited immensely from the Titan Challenge experience. WRVC has been in the middle of a Department of Education MOA Methods of Administration visitation this week. The visit started Monday morning and concluded this afternoon. Our career fair is tomorrow with over 20 businesses participating. Students will receive help in r resume writing, interviewing skills, and we will have a real on-site interview with the businesses attending. Totally Trades will be held next Friday, and Mr. Fields was successfully duct taped to a wall last Friday by the Tech 2 students as a fundraiser for FBLA. One dollar for, th for three feet of duct tape, and FBLA raised over $150. And switching back to gears over at the high school, student government voted on a resolution that was passed on a procedure regarding gender neutrality, which I invite Zoe Popovic to the stand to speak about. Hi, so my name is Zoe Popovic. I'm chair of the Westbrook High School Student Council. And the Student Can Council has been recently revamped to be more of a government body and less of a fundraising body. So we're focusing more. We identify issues in the school that students come to us with, and we decide on one issue per month to focus on. So our most recent issue was on gender inclusivity within schools. So we held a forum where students could come and voice their opinions, and the focus of this forum mainly wound up being on um, the gendering of robes at graduation and on getting a gender-neutral bathroom in our school. So we heard all our classmates' opinions, took them into consideration, and unanimously voted on a resolution. So the resolution we voted on basically states that at graduation, the senior class will be able to vote if they would like one color robes to, for a unified color for the class, or if we would like the students to be able to pick between blue and white robes, um, regardless of gender. So basically the resolution states that the robes would be separated of gender, but they, the students would still get a choice. So the senior class did vote, and we decided that we will be choosing which color we would like. And the resolution also stated that we will make the girls' bathroom by the cafeteria into a gender-neutral bathroom um, with the bathroom renovations that are coming, and that seating at graduation will not be designated by gender, but rather by height and aesthetics with the colors. Thank you. 
that's it. All right, thank you. First public participation. Um, would like would anybody like to speak? A superintendent's report. Thank you, Mrs. Joyce. Uh, congratulations to Zoe and to uh, the, the entire student council at the high school. The student council has uh, undergone quite uh, a renovation over the course of the year, looking at, um, at parliamentary procedure and uh, Robert's rules of order and really trying to build a representative form of government with our students in the high school. We're blessed with great student voice in our high school, and this is another opportunity for our students to uh, express their voices and to uh, make sure that the the building that they're in and that the community that they're in is representative of the people who go to school here so very nice job uh, speaking about those two resolutions so we, um, and I think we should be very proud of our students for taking this on as um, as, as, as in a true democracy and in a true uh, spirit of, of engagement so thank you Zoe and everybody else who's part of our Westbrook High School Student Council and to the advisors too uh, of the Student Council uh, Mr. Haynes um, Mr. Ennis and Mr. Morgan are the three advisors of the Student Council. So thank you, gentlemen, for supporting our students. Uh, in your packets and in Thursday folders and on the website tomorrow uh, is the monthly teaching and learning newsletter. Uh, and you'll see some, uh, some stories. You will see a picture of Mr. Fields taped to the wall at the Vogue Center. Uh, he, I think he kind of dared me to put it in the newsletter. So of course, there it is for you, Todd. Uh, Thanks for being such a good sport with that, too. That was great fun at the center the other day. Uh, you'll see some reports on adult education, uh, as well as some uh, things about our Winter Guard, which is a great new activity here at the high school, a really impressive activity that involves all of the performing arts. Uh, a congratulations to our students who have their artwork featured at the Portland Museum of Art during Youth Art Month. Um, and a special congratulations to one of our art teachers at the high school, Matt Johnson, who has been recognized as the Maine Art Educators Association uh, Outstanding Service Award winner, uh, Outstanding Service to the Profession. So thank you for being the teacher that you are, Matt, and congratulations to him. Uh, we are uh, in the middle of kindergarten registration for next fall. That process is continuing. The first day of screening was today at the three elementary schools. Uh, if anyone in the community uh, has a child or a grandchild or knows someone who's turning five on or before October 15th, we would love for them to register for school right away so that we can get a sense of our incoming kindergarten class. And you can make an appointment by simply calling uh, the elementary school your child will be attending. And if you go to our website, you can look up by street the school that your child is assigned to. Um, also, we're about to begin our state assessments. The uh, Empower tests or the MEA tests are beginning uh, later this month and will continue through for vacation. So thank you to our teachers who have been working hard to prepare their students for these assessments all year. And thank you to our students who have been working really hard uh, as well. I'd also like to echo the congratulations to Niagua and to Muhammad for their amazing performance. To have two national champions in our midst is pretty, pretty amazing. And to watch both of them, to watch Muhammad uh, run and to watch Niagara jump is, is just an act of beauty. So thank you and congratulations to them. You make all of Westbrook proud uh, by your accomplishments. And we share in your, in your excitement and your joy. And they're pretty humble about their, their accomplishments, which is just incredible. Uh, I'd also like to... Uh, congratulate three of our French language students, three of our students of Mr. Morin, uh, who were recognized by the Foreign Language Association of Maine for, uh, for different uh, projects that they've done, including uh, an Instagram project uh, and a video project. Uh, congratulations to uh, Nathan T. and Angelica J. and uh, a pet, pet. I can't read my own writing, Petrol M, for their, uh, their outstanding contributions at the FLAME conference. Very proud of them. Um, tonight we have a special report uh, about vaping. Vaping is becoming an epidemic uh, around the country, and it's something that we are certainly focused on here as a school community, as part of our wellness program. Uh, Alex Hughes uh, is our director of our Communities That Care program and manages the Drug Free Communities Grant. Uh, Alex has hosted uh, forums and, and community conversations at both the high school and the middle school uh, about the dangers of vaping and ways to uh, uh, identify vaping behaviors and, and, and vaping material, which is pretty eye-opening. Um, 
because it doesn't look like things that some of us may remember used to be in our schools and in our communities. Uh, it looks very every day. So uh, we asked uh, Alex to come tonight to give a brief presentation about the work that she's doing and that we're doing as a community to uh, work in preventing vaping. Um, I brought a little bit of show and tell for you to see. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about vape products, which is an electronic smoking device. Um, they look very different depending on what you're talking about. We have the older mod style vape devices. These were all confiscated in the community in Westbrook. So these are things that our kids have access to here. So we have an older mod style device, which the kids are still using. Um, this is one also. We have a newer device called a Jewel, and this is by far the most popular device we have here in our community. So popular that some kids call vaping jeweling. Um, it's like calling a tissue a Kleenex. Like it means the same thing, whether you're using a Jewel or not. Um, and then we have ones that are more rounded. You may have seen these. These are more like the old-fashioned e-cigarettes that came out years and years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a very new device for our community, which is this one. It is very small. It is very lightweight. It fits right in the palm of your hand. It is very hard to see if a student's holding it. Um, maybe almost impossible to see. This is called a Sorin Drop. It's a magnetic, I wonder if I can pull the top out, cartridge and a base. This is where the battery is, and this is where the vape liquid goes, and then it like pops right in. They come in a really cool package. It looks like an iPhone box when you buy one, like really snazzy look. Um, <coughs> so we're going to be talking about the vape products, like very briefly, the health impact of these, and then what we're doing in our community about vaping. Uh, so Jules have, this is like really high level, but a salt-based nicotine versus a cigarette, which has a free-based nicotine. Um, and it is like a very pure form of nicotine. And it has a higher form of nicotine than a cigarette has. So it has 5% nicotine. A cigarette has closer to 1%. Some of the original e-cigarettes have 2%, 5% is higher than anything else on the market. The jewels each have pods that snap in and out. One jewel pod is equivalent to smoking a pack of cigarettes when we're talking about nicotine intake. Um, nicotine has varying effects on the brain, but one impact on the brain when we're talking about kids, and I'm only gonna be talking about kids, I'm not talking about adult use. I'm not talking about adults who say they use jewels to quit smoking. I'm talking about use initiate, youth initiating use with vape products. Um, it has a negative impact on the developing brain. So it impacts memory, it impacts learning. Basically everything we're trying to teach at school, it's undoing, um, which is concerning, I think, for the school and for our community. Uh, it also, nicotine, makes the brain more susceptible to addiction of any substance later in life. So what it does is it reworks the chemical pathways in the brain and it teaches your brain how to become addicted easier later in life to alcohol, to opiates, to tobacco, whatever it is. Um, <clears throat> also, a lot of kids will tell you that there's not nicotine in their vape devices. And what I will tell you is that 99.6% of all vape juices or liquids sold contain nicotine. So pretty much all of them. I have some Westbrook specific data um, and I have some Cumberland County data. So we don't have use rates in Westbrook. We only have use rates in Cumberland County. 33% of Cumberland County youth have used a vape device in high school. Um, 15% have used a vape device in the last 30 days. When we talk about at Westbrook High School, there have been 22 kids uh, caught and disciplined for using a vape device this school year, 
which is up from 14 kids all last school year together. So we're on track to double what we saw last year. Um, and the middle school numbers, while much smaller, we're still seeing some middle schoolers caught with vape devices. Uh, when we talk about what we're doing, we're doing student education through advisory here at Westbrook High School. Um, we're doing student education through health curriculum at the middle and at the high school. We're doing education through signage and information dissemination to kids. We have a peer group here at the high school called Youth Leadership Coalition, and all they do is peer-to-peer -peer prevention work. Uh, we're doing parent education through community forums. We did one at the high school and one at the middle school. We're doing policy work here at the district level. Um, we're doing education of youth serving staff, so teachers and staff at My Place Teen Center. We are connecting kids to a class called SERP, which is a 12-hour prevention education class, and we are piloting a one-hour, one-on-one um, toolkit that would be done with a student caught vaping and our substance abuse counselor, Dr. Dyer. Um, yeah. Does anybody have any questions? any questions? So how do they buy, they can't buy cigarettes theoretically until they're 18, so how do they buy the little jewel pack? They can't buy these theoretically until they're 21, and the same with cigarettes. Um, but they can buy them from friends or from older siblings. There is at least one retailer in the city that I know sells these underage. So we do have some retail sale going on, even though it's against the law. Most of it is what we call social access. <laughs> so it's buying it from friends or getting it from older siblings or friends. Sharing. Any other questions? This is scary. Do, I mean, um, on a daily basis, what are we seeing? You know, I mean, are we um, stopping one or two kids, or is it? Is it something that's not daily, or? Um, I would say that there is daily use in our building, mm -hmm. um, but it is difficult to um, detect uh, because it's not the traditional cigarette smoke, so you're not gonna walk in the back and say, oh, it smells like cigarette smoke in here. Right. Um, the, the odors vary depending on the type of juice that's used. Um, so it could smell minty, it could smell like mango, it could smell like <laughs> strawberries. Um, so it's difficult to um, uh, detect, um, and it's uh, pretty easy to hide. Very scary. I know our policy um, committee has been working on that for the last couple months, and yeah. just trying to keep up with this is it's just amazing. Yeah. It's just, it just keeps evolving or changing. Right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Yeah, Appreciate you're welcome. That. Peter? I, uh, yes, thank you, Alex, and thank you to everybody who's working uh, on, this, uh, on this prevention effort. Um, it, it really is a scary phenomenon, especially when devices are as small as USBs or as attractive as a piece of jewelry or as undetectable um, as, as those devices are. <coughs> so thank you for raising awareness uh, to help the health and welfare of all of our kids and throughout the community. Appreciate the work you do, Alex. Thank you. A couple last things in, in my superintendent's report. Um, I would like to uh, r remind folks that uh, there is a leadership shift at our high school. As we know, Mrs. DeVoe is leaving us at the end of this week to go to the Department of Education. Uh, our leadership team that's in place uh, involves Ms. Harvey and Mrs. Brooks and Mr. Garrett. Uh, they have been meeting uh, regularly uh, with, with, uh, with Mrs. DeVoe, learning about all of the different initiatives that are going on, uh, meeting with me, meeting with uh, Jody Mezzanotti, our assistant superintendent, so that the transition to them uh, leading our high school will be smooth. Um, a number of uh, specific areas where one of them will be the main contact person will be available by the end of the week, uh, and we'll make sure that everybody knows that. But families at our high school can certainly contact any of the three of them uh, for help or for uh, anything they may need, um, and they will be able to communicate with each other. Fortunately, they, they work very well together, uh, and that team is already gelling, and I'm, I'm really confident uh, in this, this approach that we have to lead our high school for the remainder of the year. Um, we're sad to see Mrs. DeVoe leaving at the end of the week, uh, but we are very 
confident in the folks who will be leading our school. The search for the next principal of our high school has begun. Um, the posting is there out in the community or uh, on serving schools, which is an education uh, uh, employment site, as well as on Indeed and on our website and other places. Uh, that process will uh, be open until March 25th. After that, we'll be screening applicants. We'll be conducting first interviews, second interviews, which involve uh, some uh, a presentation of sorts, as well as site visits. Uh, and then we are on track and online to uh, to select our, our final nominee and to, to nominate that person to the school committee by May. So. Um, We'll be sending out. <coughs> excuse me. We'll be sending out a survey by the end of the week to uh, to parents, to students, to faculty, uh, just asking for some input on some qualities they'd like to see in the next high school principal. Uh, you'll be able to see that uh, coming home to you. Thank you, Dean. Uh, and we encourage you to to share your thoughts about what you would like to see uh, in the next principal of our high school. And finally, uh, I'd like to recognize a parent from Congan School uh, who is an author and who has written a photographer and an author who wrote a book. Uh, his name is Scott Linscott, and he published this book called uh, I'm Just a Dog. If you can see that, I love this dog. Uh, uh, it's something that uh, he wrote in conjunction with Mrs. Walls' first grade classroom at Congan. Uh, and each of the students at the school uh, identified what they wanted to do when they grew up, and the dog kind of put on their personalities as well. Yes. Mr. Dickerson? Very quickly, he's not a parent, he's a oh, volunteer. So he's he volunteered in her class to come in and made this book for those students. Awesome, thank you. And, and we appreciate his, his volunteering in Mrs. Wall's class. Uh, and, and there is a great uh, dedication to the children of Congan School and uh, some really terrific photographs of dogs. I think Miss Wood will salivate over this because she is definitely a dog lover. So uh, thank you to Mr. Linscott and others for, uh, for putting this book together. And that's all I have. Oh, great. Thank you. We have our committee reports from our chairs. Beth, do you have anything to report tonight? No. Mike? Nothing at this time. Veronica, I know you do. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 actually I don't know. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, last Wednesday we had a finance committee meeting uh, and we had our uh, initial tee up um, and overview of the upcoming budget uh, given by Dr. Lancia. Um, and then on Thursday we dug right in uh, and have started our initial review. So far we've taken a look at K through four, uh, gifted and talented, uh, English language, uh, Title I, um, <laughs> special services. Thank you, Ms. Mizanani. <laughs> um, uh, and, uh, and we will continue that process tomorrow evening. So, uh, so tune in, you know, it's, it's, it's stimulating, really. Uh, and you'll, <laughs> you won't regret it. Um, and that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Steve? I have nothing. Nothing right. at this no. time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Man, was the only one? one item on the whole business tonight, 11.1, <laughs> request to approve reallocation of athletic funds for the purchase of a batting cage and turf at Westbrook High School. Do I have a motion? Motion by Noreen, second by Mike. Any questions? All those in favor? Any opposed? That's seven in favor, zero opposed. Um, new business, 12.2, um, to request to approve an overnight trip for high school students to attend the State Model United Nations Conference at the University of Southern Maine, May 15th through 17th. Do I have a motion? Motion by Beth, second by Mike. Any questions? No? All those in favor? Any opposed? That's seven in favor, zero opposed. Thank you. 12.3. No, excuse me, um, yeah, 12.3. Request to approve an overnight trip for Key Club to attend the Key Club District Convention in Springfield, Mass, April 5th through 7th. Do I have a motion? Motion by Beth, second by Veronica. Can we actually make this a first and final since it's going to happen for our next meeting? Yeah. Oh. That's right, yeah. Good to pick up. Pick up. Beth, do you mind making that first and, and final? Sure. Okay. Any questions? No? All those in favor? Any opposed? No. Seven in favor, zero opposed. Thank you. The last item, 12.4, request to approve contractual stipend adjustments for the 2018-19 school year. 
This has to be the first and, and final, and we have to have a roll call. Do I want? Okay. Okay. Do you want me to pass these down? Sure. Do I have a motion on that? Motion by Noreen, second by Veronica. We're now passing down. This is the information that we went over last week. Peter, what was the, where will this be presented? Uh, this this uh, will be presented as, as part of, uh, this will become part of our uh, collective bargaining agreement with, our, with the Teachers Association. Uh, you, the association leadership and I have met to develop uh, a SIPAR agreement, which is an addendum to the contract to allow us to uh, pay the stipends at the, con at the current base contractual rate. And this will go retro to last year? And this will be retro to the beginning of the school year. All right, great. Thank you. Yep. Any discussion? Sue? So, I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Did you say oh, sorry. sorry. Retro to the beginning of the school year? Yes. And then I think we, at one of our meetings, you told us it was about $11,000 that? It's about $11,000 to do all this, yes. Mike, did you have a wrong? No. Um, do we, uh, I see it says a committee will be convened to study. Do we have a time frame for that? Well, the committee is ready to roll. <laughs> uh, we were just waiting for this to be signed because it's part of the sidebar. Um, the committee will be convened. Hopefully, we'll uh, be able to work uh, efficiently and, and fairly quickly. Um, if the committee has any recommendations for any uh, changes to the rubric or any changes to that uh, formula, uh, those could be entered into a sidebar for the third year of the contract, which is the next school year. Um, otherwise, we may come back with another request for a second sidebar for the next school year, and then that will go into contract negotiations for the following year. We have one year left after this in our in our three-year contract. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions on this? No, Noreen? And this is for uh, first and final approval, right? Yes, correct. And we need a roll call. Yes, you need a roll call because it's okay. about a contract. Okay. Veronica Bates? Yes. Stephen Berry? Yes. Suzanne Joyce? Yes. Noreen Fortress? Yes. Mike Popovic? Yes. Susan Salisbury? Yes. Beth Schultz? Yes. Passes. So in favor. Thank you. Thank you. Important dates. Um, March 14th, Finance Committee and Budget Meeting is tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, right here. March 15th, Professional Day, no school. March 20th, Educational Programs Committee Meeting at 5 o'clock. March 21st, 6 o'clock, Finance Committee Budget Meeting. March 25th, 7.30, Joint City Council School Committee meeting, and that is in the morning. March 25th, 5 o'clock, Policy Committee meeting. March 27th, 6 o'clock, Finance Committee budget meeting. April 3rd, 6 o'clock, Finance Committee meeting. You're going to be busy. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> April 3rd, 7 o'clock, School Committee meeting, public hearing on the... The um, 1920 and um, 2020, sorry, budget and first reading. April 4th, parent teacher conference. April 10th, 7 o'clock, school committee meeting, final reading of the budget. 2020, April 11th, 6 30, um, 2020 school budget presentation to the city council. April 12th, no school. April 15th, Patriots Day, no school. And April 16th through 19th, spring vacation. That's as far as I'm going to go, because we can read the rest at the next meeting. Yeah. June 8th, I know, we have a, yeah, should we talk about it? Yeah, June, June 8th, 8th is graduation yeah. day. Yes. Um, it's our last public participation. Would anybody like to speak? Noreen? Uh, I just want, I got an email um, asking for everyone to come out to support the unified basketball team yeah. that's playing tomorrow at 4 p.m. at the high school gym, because they are the, back in the running for the back-to-back -back state championships again this year. Oh, so if you can come out and support the Unified Basketball Team, that'll be awesome. Okay. Sue? Um, and tomorrow night is uh, Galactic Bowling um, <laughs> that I signed up to help out. It's some ridiculous time. I think it's like 8.30 at night to, I don't know what. But anyway, it benefits the senior class of next year's senior class. Oh. So it should be fun. And Thank you again, Mr. Rowe, for everything, and we'll miss you, and um, I'm sure we'll be stalking you on yes. education sites and whatnot, so <laughs> yes, we'll be we're hearing proud from of you. you. We'll miss you. Um, okay. 
because uh, you know I can't give up the opportunity for a final something or another. Um, <laughs> I do hate goodbyes, so this is not goodbye. This is just some parting words until I see you all again. Um, so first and foremost, I want to thank the school committee as well. Thank you all for your leadership, your hard work. This is a lot of time and commitment that I know you put into these jobs that I think it goes a little unheralded sometimes out in the community. Um, this is not necessarily a wi wildly attended meeting typically by the community, um, but I can sure, assure the folks at home that it is, uh, it's a lot of hard work. And I thank you for the opportunity to lead Westbrook High School. Um, it has been an honor, truly, um, and I leave uh, very grateful for that. I'm also honored and grateful for having had the opportunity to work alongside Wendy uh, Harvey and Jen Mull Brooks uh, and the uh, Myriad Athletic Directors uh, in my tenure. Um, <laughs> and uh, we really do have an amazing um, administrative team. Um, and I am deeply honored to have worked alongside uh, these, these women in particular, but also those lovely athletic directors. Um, I also have been awed and inspired by the dedicated teachers that make up Westbrook High School, and I thank them for their amazing support, their patience, and their hard work, um, and I know you do as well, um, and I hope that uh, my time in Augusta also includes celebrating the great work that our public educators are doing in the field. Uh, that's one of the things I look forward to. Um, I also want to thank the families. They've shared their amazing, interesting, resilient children with me during my tenure here at Westbrook High School, and I am truly forever changed by my experiences with them. Um, I hope everyone knows that I treat my students like I do my own children, um, and my own children will concur, I think. Um, I, I try to do that with some humility and with some humor, um, with some kindness and some compassion, and sometimes a stern talking to when warranted. Um, um, they have truly, the students in particular, have challenged me. Uh, they've taught me. They've entertained me a great deal. Uh, they also inspire me every single day, um, not only in uh, to do better for myself on their behalf, but in what I see they're going to be doing in their futures. We have some amazing kids. Um, when I first started, um, student voice has and always will be my primary uh, passion because students have a lot to tell us if we just stop to listen. Um, when I first started here, I asked every student I could find. Um, ironically, I started with summer school kids, because uh, that's who was here in July. Um, but I worked my way through uh, most of the student body and what they said that they were most proud of, um, because I asked, what are you proud of, and what would you fix if I gave you the magic wand to fix it? And they were most proud of their, their evolving and continuing diversity and of the amazing relationships that they feel that they have with their, with their teachers who they identify as very supportive. The thing that they wanted to fix, they wanted Westbrook High School to be a school that they felt was admired. They wanted to be proud of where they came from and they talked to me about sort of slang terms, about what it meant to be from Westbrook. And we spent a lot of time on trying to change that narrative. Um, the staff and the students have all worked for three years on that goal, and I think that they have made amazing efforts because what they ultimately needed to realize is the change comes from them. Um, their student voice has grown in a number of different platforms, and I leave knowing that they are standing up, they're speaking up, and they're being heard, and they know how to do that in authentic, genuine, and mature ways. I also encourage, as I leave through our community, to listen to them and invite them to the table as we're talking about what Westbrook High School is going to look like in our future. This is an opportunity and a change in administration, and it's an opportunity for them to share what they see Westbrook High School can be, what they want it to be. <coughs> I think they want an institution that makes them proud. I think they want an institution where academic programming is as wildly supported and celebrated as our athletic or our music programs, singularly. I think that in light of this amazing time in this amazing city where we are evolving and changing and shifting, it's a time when we're in transition and I encourage us to be creative and brave and to consider the old ways and consider how we reemerge as a school that is a beacon for this community because our students are counting on us and we're counting on them and I hope we're listening. So you and you and you, thank you. <laughs> and all of you, thank you guys.
Thank you. Kelly, I, I'll share with you the name after, but I had a couple juniors at my um, house this weekend, and they were very disappointed you were leaving. And, and I said, well, you know, um, what did you like best about her? And they, um, the girl said, she got us. <laughs> So um, it was. It, she was very sad to see you go, and I'll I'll share the name. So, thank you. Thank you. you did a great job, and, and you came in, and um, you had um, like the whole like we were talking earlier at a committee meeting earlier on proficiency, and and it's been you know just a really challenging time, and and you stuck with it, and you supported it, and you told us and showed us why it's important. And you, you know, I, I know I said this at a couple other committee meetings. Um, they are going to be so grateful to have you up there and appreciative. You're going to do a great job up there. Huge loss for us, and and um, hopefully we can still stalk you. Yes. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> gov. I, I can't really hide. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Because you're very passionate, and and you just did an amazing job. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Anything else? No. Okay. Um, any announcements? No, I think we've done that. No? Okay. Um, request to adjourn. Do I have a motion? Motion by Noreen, second by Steve. All those in favor? None opposed, seven in favor. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you.